Animaniacs, welcome to Roseanne Retrospectives. I'm Scott. I'm Blake. I'm Pat. This is the podcast where we journey into the Roseanne subdimension. What is the Roseanne subdimension? Well, in the series finale of the show, the Roseanne subdimension is revealed when we learn that Roseanne has really been writing a book about her life, and what we have been watching is her version of the story. In an effort to distinguish the Roseanne subdimension from the Roseanne reality, we review each episode of the show. Today, we will be talking about the pilot episode, Season 1, Episode 1, Life and Stuff, where Darlene barks like a dog. Oh yeah, so this is our uh, so this is our first episode, so we're not very good at it, and that's okay. We're getting things worked <laughs> out. What I mean is, this is a really hard show to analyze because of all the subtext that is within it, especially if you posit that it's not actually... That, that we have an unreliable unreli- narrator there. Um, and we're trying to sort of reconstruct the real story, that the one that she's hiding from us. Those things are always really hard. So in preparation for this podcast, Blake has been doing a lot of reaching out to some of the lesser-known Roseanne actors. I engaged in a Frost-Nixon-like conversation with Sal Barone to talk about some of the finer details of starring in a pilot episode of Life and Stuff. What did Sal Barone play? He played DJ for one episode. That will be available online, though. The transcript of our conversations. We talked a little bit about the Iraqi war. It got, oh, wow. wow. I, didn't, I didn't know you talked about that. That's good. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> well, wait. It is Roseanne's theory, according to Wikipedia, that DJ... Uh, the character would have died in the Iraq War. Oh, Sal, yeah. to- Sal told me that he thinks the DJ should get married and get a PhD and have kids. So I don't think he falls into that. <laughs> mm-hmm. There's yeah. no way Roseanne could have ever raised a child that would become a math major. I'm yeah, just no, saying. No, I, agree. No. I think she no, would have nobody, crushed that out of him early. <laughs> no one was doing any math in that house. They couldn't count by like twelves, probably. Cal- Sal yeah. told me that he had <laughs> two beer quantities. <laughs> vague memories of Roseanne, but he would not share them with me. One re- memory that he was willing to share with me was that he could not separate real life with film life, so he hated Sarah Gilbert both on the set and off the set. Because he was supposed to hate her, right? Yeah. He was very wow. confused. I mean, and that's a lot to put on like a five-year-old. It is. That's fascinating because that's probably a big problem with a lot of child actors that you don't hear a lot about. They're children. That's deep. And Yeah, that is deep. Wow, it's a good, good thing call, you got man. out of that toxic environment. Yeah, I yeah, think that was did. probably a common problem on that wow. show that people confused it with I, reality. I yeah. also, he told me a story that I thought was really sweet. He said that he thought that auditions were short jobs and that... Regular jobs were long jobs. Oh wow! So auditions were like the same as uh, yeah, like proper in his little jobs. in his little kid perspective, it was all the same thing. Wow, that sounds like a excellent perspective for an actor. No, that sounds really confusing. <laughs> sounds like a little kid's actor. view of the world, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, he was little. I can't blame him. Did he? That's great. Did he go to a bunch of a, oh? Never mind. All right, so since this is the first episode of the entire series and the first episode of a season, I feel it's appropriate that we address the intro of the show. Uh, The intro changes from season to season, and for this season, we're going to be centered around some kind of paper that Jackie's holding up at the table. I like to think that Jackie has prescribed, or not prescribed, subscribed to a dating service. Mm, and that's what the letter they're and discussing that's what the is. Yeah. Because <laughs> Jackie does make a lot of bad choices with men. She doesn't understand men. Can you blame Just, her? Like, but look at this guy. But in the Roseanne oh, wow. subdimension, she's gay. So there you go. 
So that's why they've all gathered there. I would assume so. Yeah. It's because it's it was a family oh, meeting to discuss Jackie's new boyfriend. They called Crystal. Hey, oh, Crystal, we're having jello circle things, and we were talking about Jackie's weird new boyfriend. Oh, we have a rattle on the table, <laughs> and you will not be able to make sense of it. You won't be able to figure out what it is. What that rattle. No yeah, one knows what is. that rattle is. No, there's like a multicolor rattle with some little things in it that might be, it's like a gumball machine. But oh, it looks like those really. things that come on the can. Candy, the candy in the store. I like to prescribe shaky things. Here's my the theory. candy rattle. Candy rattle. Here's yeah. my theory. Roseanne works in a plastic plant mm. that is made of plastic. <laughs> maybe Roseanne is making rattles. Maybe, and maybe yeah. that's why she hates her kids all the more. I assume Roseanne <laughs> just comes back from the office all the time, or from the the factory all the time, and she's like, "Here's some plastic junk. I got lots of." Crappy plastic junk at work. I got a big box of crap for all you children. So let's talk about this opening credit sequence thing. It's kind of like rotational around yeah, the yep, family. Yeah, we spin around. We get to see each member. That's a good way of introducing them. It really beats the later introductions where everyone is like morphing through the uncanny valley. Oh, uh, I can't wait until we oh, get yeah, to we'll those get to episodes. That later. That's very, horrible. Very, very early video effects. This is just a 360 rotation of the house. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of cool because you can see parts of the house that you can't see in TV. Right. You get to see parts of the house that don't actually exist in the show, too. I don't actually really think great. it's the real house. No, it's a, they, it's a different, a different set. House, it's got to yeah. be a different set. So then it, it starts out kind of what is ostensibly supposed to be in that room. Right. After yeah. the intro, it's just like, okay, so here's the room you just saw. Mm -hmm. But they're all like having fun. It's like in the morning. Mm -hmm. Wait, they're not having fun. It's early morning. Roseanne's cooking breakfast, which is like 20 pieces of toast on a plate or something. Yeah, she appears. Wait, is she frying eggs? I didn't gonna... see any eggs. I think she's just she kind of... Like... When did she have time to bake pie? Well, that's a really good point. Why mm -hmm. was there pie hanging pie out there? Is baking pie morning? is not in her personality. Right. I don't feel like she just had pie like chilling out in the morning. Right, because like, yeah, the episode starts and she's got this pie out that she apparently has got up at 4.30 baked. And now she's letting cool. Roseanne was not getting up at 4.30 in the morning to bake a pie. Right. <laughs> and so when DJ comes in, it's like... And then, you know, casually mentions, can we have pie for breakfast? That's pretty legit. Everything yeah. smells like pie. Roseanne just cooked a morning pie. Well, I guess we're, we're skipping a little over the plot because we forgot about uh, how the episode starts with Roseanne insulting her kid and throwing oh, a yeah. shoe at him. She's like, fuck off, DJ. <laughs> this is the best way to start a series that's going to be geared solely around someone's animosity towards their children. She doesn't um, just insult the kid. She throws a shoe at his face. <laughs> yeah, he had a hard time catching that. You could see he looked a really like the actual Sal Baron, not just DJ the character. Like, ah, oh, the shoe. <laughs> <laughs> it hurts. <laughs> Why did she throw us? <laughs> so after we get through with the shoe throwing, enter John Goodman, one uh, Dan Connor. Who and maybe, man, is he big. He's a giant man. He's a former football player and like ready to break things. So as soon as he <laughs> enters, the first thing he can think to say is asking Roseanne if there's coffee. And we get to hear some really oh, yeah. great back and forth about everyday things. What an ass she is, though, just to, like, reply that, Dan, has there ever not been coffee? Mm -hmm. It's really, like, she's just, like... She's, like, really passive-aggressive. What can I oh, say yeah. to hurt Dan today? Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> the one thing we should keep in mind is that this has all been reinterpreted by Roseanne after the fact. Oh, man. Oh, so that explains why there's an audience that's, like, laughing at everything that she's well, saying. Oh, yeah. I mean, because that's... it's, like, she's, like... Yeah, and it also, everything I said was pretty cool, wasn't it? And it also <laughs> explains why Dan doesn't just say, hey, I don't have to deal with this verbal abuse. I'm, I'm going to just go drink with my friends. Oh, wait. So here's, here's I think, where we have to get into our theory, maybe, about the true nature of Dan Good Connor. Call. Good call. Uh, we've watched a few episodes at this point, and with, with the whole assumption that uh, what we see is not as it appears, and that Roseanne has... Rewritten the character Roseanne has rewritten much of her life. Mm -hmm. uh, so our theory is that Dan is a dangerous alcoholic, and, and, and we're... she's actually she's actually made him into a more of a lovable goof. Whereas <laughs> uh, he wasn't uh, he wasn't a lovable goof. Not even like a lovable goof, but also He's like dangerous. a big kid. 
Oh mm-hmm. yeah, she turned him into a big kid. So it's sort of like uh so you know, maybe uh she was able to rewrite the danger parts of Dan Connor, mm-hmm. but she and, uh and was it, not able to rewrite her way of dealing with that, which was this sort of unceasing sarcasm, this unceasing cynical response to everything around her. Mm-hmm. And even when she rewrote <laughs> Dan, she still left in that he's dangerously violent at times and a drinker. Oh, yeah. Oh, not only is he a drinker, yeah. he's an alcoholic. Right, yeah. Oh, no, right. She can. She kind of tempers that, but you can tell. I wonder that, if there's uh, any episode where he doesn't drink. <laughs> we have to start well, paying attention to that, because I feel like he drinks every episode. We're, we're going to get to see a lot of like soda cans, quote unquote, that it's hard to tell if they're actually beer or not. Oh, they yeah. don't say beer light, like the can that he's drinking in this I episode. I don't think like so a six pan, tell. a six pack, if you were as big as Dan Connor is, would like do much good. Oh, right. So, of course, he's going to be drinking like a 12 pack a night. Like, yeah. He's, he's not a six pack a night guy. He's not oh, a six pack a night. He graduated that when he graduated high school. But... When he graduated <laughs> elementary school, yeah. <laughs> no, this is a pro drinker. This is a, this is a man who likes his booze. Mm-hmm. We think Roseanne probably likes her booze too, but we never really see that. You'll get to see her chug a glass of wine this season. Uh, oh yeah, spoiler I can't alert. wait Don't for that. Spoiler alert. So yeah, when Roseanne says, "Dan, isn't there a coffee every morning?" What she's really saying is, "You're hung over again, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> You're hung over like... again, and I don't like it. But I'm not going to say anything about it. I'm just going to." Passive aggressively snipe at you. <laughs> we also have this theory that Roseanne is a drinker herself, but she's the kind that hides it from everyone. Oh right, yeah, oh, like, yeah, yeah. She's yeah. either got a like a flask she nips from, or like you were saying, she has some kind of weird fruity drink. Yeah, that she I, just... I could see her drinking some kind of fruity liquor. Or she something. hides it from the kids. Yeah, you know, she's not gonna drink in front of the kids. Dan doesn't care. Maybe but, she know. has it in a cooking sherry bottle, and she just poured mm, out all the cooking sherry good, and put yeah. some good. Alcohol I don't feel in like it. she's the type of lady that would have a cooking sherry bottle. <laughs> <She> <laughs> has it. it's yeah, all that's a whole it's other all... strato economic. You know, no, it's not real. It's all dusty. It's in the back of the cabinet. So that's where she hides it. Oh, it she hides the, it because it's cagey. old. It was she's, for the, she's smart, man. It was for the one fancy meal she was going to make for Dan that they never oh, ended up making because so, he, he he got too drunk and passed out on their anniversary. And, oh, God. So yeah, that makes and it again even, and again. That mm-hmm. makes it even more meaningful that she would pour that out. Exactly. And replace it that's with deep. alcohol to mm-hmm. mask that's the pain. Deep. After she gets done uh, harassing Dan and smart assing him, uh, enter Becky, I believe. Becky's an asshole. Becky's the oldest daughter. Yep. She's a teenager. Mm hmm. Like I, I said, Becky is an asshole. She bar- barges into the kitchen like she owns the place and is like, I need cans. Give me cans. And she runs to the pantry and starts grabbing cans because she's having a food drive. Here's what I don't get. So she randomly starts throwing cans into a garbage bag. Like, that's going <laughs> to break on the bus. Oh, yeah. So yeah, she's not, on, not only is she an asshole, she's not very bright. Oh, she didn't think it through. But she's, you know, she wants to participate. Maybe there's old clothes in community. there or something. I guess. Yeah, ah. like, I, I'm assuming in the actual reality, this is another one of her attempts to run away. Oh, And whoa. she's got, like, yeah, she has a bunch of clothes in there. She's like, I need food for our food and drive. And there's this, like, one off Roseanne line about how they need the cans and how they're poor, only we don't get that they're poor and their the pantry's clearly stocked. Oh, yeah, there's, like, tons of food in there, but, you know. <laughs> it just doesn't work as a theory. No. No. No, it doesn't. She was clearly trying to run away. Oh, yeah. Wow. Where would you go though if you tried to run away from Lanford? <laughs> Chicago. She's in, Chicago. She's trying okay. to get to Chicago because that's where people go to succeed. Yeah. In and if you have a ba- if you have a garbage bag full of old clothes and some cans, you can make it in Chicago. So Roseanne, in the meantime, is being mean and slams down a box of cereal in front of DJ while he's eating. We see the cereal just splash all over the table out of the box. And for the remainder of the scene, the kids are going to be picking the cereal up off of the table and either shoving it in their mouths or shoving it back into the bowls. Yeah, that's kind of messed up. Honestly, maybe they are poor. I don't know. I've shoveled. I've I have shoveled cereal on the table back into the bowl. I guess I've okay. done that too. I guess, yeah. It just. I guess you're right. I, I'm willing guess, to yeah, admit, you know, admit that I'm right. human. Maybe I'm that. human. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, they're they're eating their Odies. Um, 
This is where DJ decides to suggest that they have some pie for breakfast. And, and what a bad idea that is. Dan Dan agrees, but is immediately shut down by Roseanne. Because Dan, Dan has no real authority no, in this Dan, household. Dan still hung over. He just said yes, like, because it was a question. And uh-huh. he figured yes was the safest answer to any question. He wasn't <laughs> listening is what I mean. He was thinking about how much his head hurt. So at this point, I believe Becky is talking on the phone. The phone is rung and distracted her from collecting her food, food right. drive items. And it's her friend, and she's having her, you know, preteen girl talk, I guess. They're... Oh, yeah. And she's grab- shoving her hand into the cereal box mm-hmm. that Roseanne is holding. Right. So we've got a bunch of chaos Everybody's going on. Everybody's, like, grabbing at the cereal. Well, we need to talk about Roseanne's response when she later picks up the phone. Right. So, yeah, Becky gets off the phone and then is doing some other stuff. And then, r- then the phone rings again. And Roseanne says, I have breast. If you were an adult and you picked that up she and told boobs. that to a child, yeah, boobs. She's like, yeah, boobs. I got it, boobs. And you would get in hey, trouble. I have boobs. Wow. In the meantime, Darlene has come in and immediately started a fight with DJ. Um, a fight that we now know may have been real. Right. Yeah, rooted, it was likely in, a real fight a between fight. Sal and uh, Sarah Gilbert. So at this point, Darlene is now uh, remembering that she has a note from her history teacher, which she very clearly has forgotten to mention until the last minute because she might get out of it. Um, so she gives that to Dar- to Roseanne, and all of a sudden... Now Roseanne has to reschedule her day because she has a, a teacher conference scheduled for three fifteen that afternoon. I think it was three fifteen. It was in the yeah, afternoon. It, like it seems really during early. Our work hours. Teachers would normally like give you a four rather than a three fifteen. Yeah, unless that was an eighties thing. I guess. Yeah, it was an eighties thing that you left work early all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so. Oh, the ki- suicide. Yeah. Yeah. I guess one suicide. one thing one thing we really haven't brought up yet, but. Uh, is going to be a running gag throughout the show is how uh, Roseanne frequently suggests that her kids kill themselves to the kids. Uh, <laughs> oh, she... no. Her, I think the first thing we hear is her kid saying, asking if... Oh, it was Darlene. Darlene wanted to um, know if Roseanne would like her to throw herself off a bridge. She makes that statement. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what did she and say? Like, did she take says, everyone, can you take oh, everyone well, or something? I might as well jump off a bridge. Mm-hmm. Oh, and then Roseanne says, can you take everyone with you then? <laughs> like, what the hell, Roseanne? That's messed up. <laughs> right, well. In yeah. the sub-dimension, do you think that she actually said that? I think that they may have said even stronger words and that Roseanne softened that one up a bit. But unfortunately, because of all of the, because her internal compass is skewed because of her constant <laughs> cynical look at the world, she th- she thinks that those jokes about suicide are um, funny, inappropriate. No, 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 appropriate, age appropriate, <laughs> right? Age appropriate. Yeah, right. sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So Roseanne continues to put her kids down throughout the series, and uh, yes, it's great yes. that we get this to is see the this right in the more bat, explicit right. ways as the series continues. Yeah, it gets pretty bad. And they give her. They think that they uh, learn pretty well from their teacher, and uh, <laughs> give it back to Roseanne pretty good, right? Yeah. Yeah. No doubt. Yeah. Anyway, at this point, the uh, the I think the bus honks outside, and the kids all pile out of the kitchen because it's time for school. All of a sudden, kitchen's deserted except for Roseanne and Dan. And this is where we get to see our first Roseanne on Dan, uh, casual flirting. And we really, really realize that Dan probably has a foot fetish. Right. Well, it's not that we realize it. It's that he just straight out states. (laughs) Yeah, he just. (laughs) What a weird, like, monologue to go off on on a pilot. Oh, yeah. This is in the pilot episode. This is like, oh, yeah, they're going to love the foot fetish part. That'll get us a contract. (laughs) Wait till we get to the foot fetish part. (laughs) That was such an 80s thing. It was. What? (laughs) Foot fetishes were an 80s thing? I have a feel like it yeah i don't know i don't know about that well they were a creepy thing yeah maybe oh then the maybe 80s is all about, about creepiness fetish. oh yeah that's a good point. yeah that's 80s true. was the creepiest decade so dan of course i guess because of humor or something um <laughs> dan goes off about <laughs> how much he loves feet or humor or something yeah <laughs> well this it starts because he's freaking he, he, he starts with a neurotic rant about not wanting uh crumbs in his butter 
Um, Cause that leads everybody to talk about foot fetish. Right, they go down a wild path. But, uh, <laughs> um, so we just get a nice little little joke monologue for for Dan to go off on his routine about uh, crumbs and his butter, how he can't stand them. What a weird associative gap, though, to go from crumbs in your butter to like a girl hanging on her shoe well, or her foot. Because Roseanne asks him about. Well, they start fighting, and they go, and you see the seething animosity that they have, uh, and the, you know they these they want to kill each other. Um, Roseanne posits, "Are you upset that you married me?" And he's like, "Yeah." And then he's like, "Nah." And they joke around, and then Roseanne asks, "Well, who would you have married if you hadn't married me?" And that's where he starts talking about, yeah. "Oh, how'd I marry this foot person?" What was her name? Something Carter's. Uh, She's a Carter. Josephine Carter. Josephine Carter, Carter who I assume... Maybelline. <laughs> Maybelline. <laughs> I assumed Josephine Carter was a, a Jimmy Carter relative. Yeah, that, I thought that was his wife. Yeah, so I thought he, I thought that was the joke, but the joke was just, I guess, that's... That would have been pretty awesome if you almost were married <laughs> Jeremy Carter's wife. <laughs> yeah, his life didn't turn out the way he thought that it would. That would be pretty wow. epic. I would watch that. Um. So anyway, they... Uh, they talk briefly about Dan's foot fetish and they they flirt and we get to see how much they they really love each other in Roseanne's yeah. eyes. They and flirt a lot throughout they, the series. They do. More than They're a normal. Married. Yeah, but I yeah. Don't, I don't know. Do married couples flirt I all the so. time? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, the uh the discussion switches to the sink in the kitchen which has become clogged. Um Roseanne is positing when Dan is going to finally fix it. Um, Here's something I don't get. A clogged sink takes like 15 minutes to unclog. Oh, yeah. You That's d- not like a, a an all-day activity or like a six-hour activity. He could have very easily come home and unclogged it. Yeah. The fact that he wasn't willing to do that is just... So indicative of how big an an alcoholic he is. Exactly, yeah. because at first he says, "Oh, I'll plunge it," and you're like, "Okay, that's probably good enough." But then Roseanne asks that he fix it, which implies there's something wrong with the drain. Which I don't know. You stick some Drano in there. Maybe you take that little U piece off and clean it out. This, yeah. This is this is a guy that it's does handiwork for a living. Yes. This is yeah. a contractor. <laughs> this is a contractor. This should take him less this than five like minutes. This is like a painter. He, well, he knows like, how to do this. He can do this drunk. Like He, he will, yes. and he can, so this shouldn't be an issue. <laughs> he might not even need equipment. He could just do it with his bare hands. <laughs> exactly. Rip it apart. Oh, yeah, that's right. Um, we skipped something that I found really shocking uh, while Roseanne was talking with Dan about his hypothetical wife. She calls him. She calls her a slut. Just yeah, straight up. Yeah, it's a little aggressive. <laughs> Just that slut. Which a, for the eighties, <laughs> that was like super aggressive. It took me aback. I don't. Rem- I don't recall hearing that word on television all that much. That in would the be 80s, like calling a lady the c word today. It would be like on yeah. that level of oh, aggressiveness. Really? Uh, See, the impre- I guess maybe I don't remember the eighties that much because the impression <laughs> I got was that that must have been a perfectly acceptable thing to happen in the eighties. Mm-hmm. It's perfectly it's- <laughs> acceptable now, but no longer in the eighties. I think it's less. I don't know. It's even. I think some networks would balk more at that word than shit. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's, it's more. It's more charged and. I mean, people still use it in jokes and yeah, stuff, but it still but... kind of puts off a lot of people. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So I just wanted to bring that up because that's a good call. Because Roseanne, I think she says that was an little... insightful memory <laughs> you had to recall that. Exactly. Thanks, thanks. We're going for away. that type almost... of journalistic integrity on the Roseanne review. Okay, so this is uh, at this point we wrap up our first view of the house and we cut to first scene first scene first scene in the entire series you have like a clapboard be like that (laughs) boom check print print right yeah we print print tv onto like a film at that point maybe yeah you can print print on a vhs oh yeah i guess it was printed in a way yeah so all right enter scene two our first uh glimpse of wellman plastics roseanne's current place of employment for at least one season i have a very strong memory of George Clooney looking like a Chippendale dancer, like that whole 
front thing was just ready to come oh, off. Oh, yeah, it, he does. He definitely looks like he's wearing, a like, a stripper's version of an office shirt. Yeah. With, like, a, <laughs> like, a fake pocket protector in it, and it's, like, light pink, and it's, like, it, he's wearing a tie oh, with yeah. a short sleeve shirt. Yeah, he's ready is, to go. <laughs> he's ready. So George Clooney's the boss. Yes. He plays the blo- the boss for several episodes. Um, <laughs> Booker. Booker. Booker the boss. And right off the bat, we get to find out that he's an asshole. Um, no, wait. Oh, do we really find Every- that so out? So everybody's an asshole on this show. That's a good point. Why is he an asshole? Well, he's telling Roseanne that uh, there are 200 cases behind on that Gilman order. He's and they're a gonna supervisor. Have to pick a- you're he right, you're right. has to ride him hard. You're, well, he turns it, he's, he's an asshole later <laughs> he comes, on, I guess. He comes later off on. As That's a, a spoiler right. alert. He's yeah. just trying to ride the women hard. <laughs> so Booker... Or, uh, Roseanne brings up to Booker that she needs some time off to go to Darlene's parent-teacher conference for this afternoon. Booker is not having any of it uh, and starts to deliver an extended football metaphor uh, as to why Roseanne uh, is and part of a team. And that's just all there to show that Roseanne is not going to be part of like the man world and the football analogies and all of that type of ridiculousness. Right. Yeah, she's, she holds that in disdain. She stomps on that immediately uh, with a really sarcastic <laughs> quilting metaphor, completely yeah. destroying uh, his, his well, masculinity. What a weird, like, what, how weird would that be if somebody gave you a football metaphor and you responded with a quilting metaphor? Well, you would you'd be an asshole. <laughs> yeah, essentially. He yeah. was already being an you asshole. You would also be like really off putting if you did that. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. Roseanne is pretty off. Pretty off putting. Yeah. Throughout. Um. So she finally twists Booker's arm, convinces him to let her get off a little bit early to go to the conference, but not really early enough. So she's. You know, had to do a little bit of compromising with him. So then she goes right over to her gang of friends who are going to be great. Who I can uh, hopefully interview one day. Yeah. <laughs> to discuss the <laughs> role of the Latino woman in the blue collar community and the role of the African American woman in the blue collar community. Oh, yeah. The role cool. of the Southern white woman in the, <laughs> the blue collar woman. community. Yeah. The crystal, right? Crystal, crystal yep. yeah. So Natalie for, West. This is our first, our introduction to Crystal, who's going to be around for at least one season. And I, it's a weak <laughs> introduction to Crystal. You really it don't is. get too much of like her character, her yeah. depth, her mm-hmm. personality. Crystal is hilarious. Yeah. Right. She's pretty great. She's got a lot of... Uh, She's like their screech. Yeah, she is. She's uh, kind Urkel. Of, she's kind of like. I, oh, Wait, no, no, is Jackie no, that, the Urkel? Jackie would be the Jackie's Urkel. definitely their Urkel. Okay. Yeah. Crystal's like she another just shows Urkel. up. Jackie Natalie just shows Crystal's up. Crystal's like a sub Urkel. She's like a lost soul. Oh well, yes. But there are yes. two lost souls at this point because Jackie is also somewhat. But she's of a like lot. the lost soul that goes along with Jackie. <laughs> I see. Oh, she's <laughs> like the what Jackie could be if she did not have a Roseanne to keep her straight. Right. Mm-hmm. <gasps> Because I guess, wait, I don't know if you mentioned, but one of the things of the Roseanne, um, the final episode of Roseanne is she reveals that she, uh, she reveals that she changed a lot of the different characters. So Mm -hmm. like, for example, um, she changed Jackie. Uh, So the Jackie that we see in the Roseanne show is straight, but uh, the supposed real Jackie is supposed to be gay. Right. But Roseanne claims she could never have seen her uh, dating dating women. She could only see her. She like just always saw her dating men well, can, in her head. Do so. you think in the sub dimension that Jackie dates uh, Crystal? Possibly. I don't know. Though. I don't know Possibly. about that. I just it's... don't think Crystal would be her type. No, because Crystal's story hinges so Crystal's much on her gay. her shattered relationships with men. She's had like a bunch of different failed marriages. She has a guy that died because he fell into a bridge pylon uh, while it was being cast. Yeah, We're gonna Sunny. He's she's. Gonna oh d- yeah, that was supposed to be like. A funny thing about Crystal. Oh, yeah, her husband got... died in a ridiculous well, that, way. We'll okay, talk. we should come to that's, that. That's a later episode. That is that's like... later. Spoiler alert. Oh. Spoiler alert. Um, so yeah, the, the, now that Roseanne is sitting down with her group of friends, uh, she goes on and delivers an, a wonderful comedic monologue about how men are only the way they are because of the way women shape them. Uh, and this is this is kind of just directly right off of Roseanne's stand-up. Oh, it is. Chain. It's exactly her stand-up mm-hmm. with a donut. Right, yeah. With She's a donut. eating again in this scene. Uh, 
I think she eats in most scenes. She eats in every scene except for the scene with the teacher. Mm-hmm. Well, when it comes to that, I guess the kids really eat in every scene they're in. And I think that she, everyone is eating in I the show. I think originally she was supposed to eat the teacher. <laughs> no. That was the A version, and then they went with the B version. I wouldn't have minded if she had come in with like a snack. Like if she was eating, like she drinking a Santa a can of soda because people. Or if are, like she had like an arm in her mouth, <laughs> uh, a child's arm. Take that, Mrs. Crane. <laughs> Ooh, it's gonna be a bad conference. Um, so, that's not a good way to start no. a conference. <laughs> so yeah, Roseanne explains just what it is about um, men that women need to remove in order to craft them into the perfect specimen. Essentially everything. I like mm-hmm. I like everything their mother did to them. Mm-hmm. And then, but then she, <laughs> when she's holding the donut to deliver this visual metaphor, which we do in conversation, she she brushes off maybe one or two flakes of uh, sprinkles, sprinkles, or whatever, and then she removed. Then she's like, "Now we gotta get rid of all that macho stuff from the beer commercials." And she breaks Wait, it in s- half. Oh yeah. my gosh, all that's that- half of the donut. Right, but you're. It's ironic. She wants to get rid of the macho posturing of the Budweiser beer in her. Well, the she husband doesn't man. say Budweiser. Because- we stop saying Budweiser. <laughs> they don't drink Budweiser on this show. Although I think later there are some Budweiser cans. I just wanted to say that because it's the worst of the beers. Right, it's from all the macho beer right? light commercials that they see. Because this but is the only- <laughs> it's ironic because of how much your husband drinks. Mm-hmm. Both in the sub dimension and the real dimension, we assume. Right. Well, as a drinker, it makes sense why he would be so disproportionately shaped by the beer commercials over his mother. Almost literally He's... disproportionately <laughs> shaped by the beer commercials. Exactly. Get He's... it? Yes. I wonder what his mother had to do with his drinking. <laughs> and that's why Roseanne is saying all this to the donut. <laughs> And then right. she eats the male ego part of the donut. <laughs> she does. She consumes it. And she the, takes it within herself and makes it a part of herself. And the audience, do you understand? I, I do. The, the audience claps for that. They go nuts. They love it so much. They go, Woo! I think that might just be because that's where they saw her stand up. Oh yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they were like, "I know that joke. I I've know that. It. I saw it on Johnny Carson." <laughs> <laughs> So after she gets finished with her spiel, the work whistle goes off, and all of the factory workers, who are predominantly women, yeah, yeah. Um, which it's it's interesting to see people working in a manufacturing environment at all. It is and that doesn't happen now in the U.S. No, as much. That, all oh, that yeah. plastic type of stuff is not going on right. in <laughs> if, if Lanford, it, Illinois. So the women start going back to work, and we get our first introduction to Jackie. Jackie is uh, Roseanne's sister, and she has very similar hair in this Yeah, <laughs> yeah very, very similar. Her hair similar is like hair. all big and fluffy. Yep. I think it's a fake. I think it's a like I wig. agree. It probably is. And and as as sisters, the two actresses do not really no. look related. They, so they're not at different all. parents, clearly. And, and, yeah, and I think that the hair was probably their first attempt at being like, well, these have to be sisters. Let's Just make that it. one actress wear a wig so yeah. they look more similar. That's what the head the head fund donator guys told us. So right. you better do it. Stick a wig on her, but they just give up uh, afterwards. I think her hair changes like almost every episode. Yeah, it, oh, wow. it goes through a lot of different faces. It, yeah. it never looks right. No, no, it doesn't. Uh, but so Jackie is just uh, the previous night gone to a seminar. Uh, a seminar about visualization called See It and Be It. She is a lost soul. <laughs> she is very much a lost soul. She is bought into this hook, line, and sinker. Is trying to convince Roseanne that she should go to it, too. Yeah, and Ro- Roseanne isn't having any of it. No. Roseanne, Crystal is. Crystal, Crystal, yeah, right. So they yeah, they, they continue the conversation and onto the floor of the plant. And... <laughs> Crystal, and Crystal over here. Is well, I think I think Jackie's telling Crystal she has to come. She has to come to the to the see it and believe it mm-hmm. because it will change her life. Right. You know what I was and thinking? Then... It was thirty dollars to go see that back in the day. Oh, like damn, that's a, a lot of money. money. Yeah, it's like sixty dollars now. About yeah. Yeah. It's like three hundred dollars actually. <laughs> it's more like yeah, like three hundred. <laughs> oh yeah, that's... that's a big amount of money. Right. No, Jackie got scammed. Yeah. Like, pretty, well, uh, 
Yeah. It's, Jackie's it's, getting. Wait, Jackie already went to see it. Yeah, she already yeah. went oh, once. Oh fuck, she, she got scammed. She's probably going to be going again because I think she mentions a second video or or like a second seminar. Second that, seminar, yeah. So she's she's so, on a bad path. She's, Jackie's like a, one of those naive people well. that thinks that they're not naive. Right. I think that's what she comes off as. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't remember. Does she do that a lot in the episodes? Go to weirdo, uh, you know, get scammed by. Uh, she's get, always doing weird stuff. People. Yeah, I feel like she's kind of getting. Sca- she gets played by Booker. Oh yeah, pretty heavily. She but totally she sh- and she should be able to see through his shenanigans. She's not always going to like scams like that, but she's always doing weird stuff like that. Oh mm-hmm. wow, she's a lost soul. <laughs> so she tells Crystal that. This will change your life. And Crystal's response is, I'd love to change my life. I'd and the, love to change my life. And the audience just cracks up at this. <laughs> but it doesn't seem funny. like a joke. This just seems like a woman who hates her life. No, she and said right. it. She wanted to change it's her life. It's not a joke. No, this is, this is bad times in Lanford. Like, these despair. women hate it's their job. It's people laughing at despair. This is a, a manufacturing job that it... Looks unpleasant. You got it. You're just ha- inhaling plastic <laughs> yeah. fumes all day, and your hands are cut up from handling like <laughs> jagged, sharp plastic junk. No, she wants to change her life, but it makes the, sense. And How the, can you mock it? The audience thinks it's hilarious. It is. <laughs> it, it's, it is pretty hilarious. This show has a wonderful use of uh, the the laugh prompting for the audience because there are plenty of times where the laughing gets inserted where. Were it absent, you would be horrified. You wouldn't right. know it was a joke. Right. And there are a lot of like heated arguments that go on where... And not ju- a- it's not just this episode. It gets worse later on. But that's <laughs> definitely true. They don't know how to implement the laugh track at all. Mm-hmm. Well, it's a, it's, is it a, it's a laugh track, right? It's yeah. not the studio audience. I, I, they don't I record the studio track. audience. No, no it's laughing. totally a studio audience. I thought audience it was. Because there's that one episode where uh, Tom Arnold surprises Roseanne in bed. In the credits, during the credits, oh, Tom yeah, Arnold yeah. comes in. He's like, hello, I'm Tom Arnold. I'm in your bed. It's and like then the bar. audience is like, Because <laughs> that's Woo! exactly how it sounds. Yeah. That's exactly how it sounds. I'm Tom Arnold. Yeah. Right. So uh, Jackie goes on and on about uh, how Crystal needs to go to this seminar. And then Roseanne goes into an extended uh, monologue to put her down. Right. Which what if actually Jackie in the real dimension is a normal, well put together woman, gay woman who Roseanne resents because she never took any of Roseanne's advice and turned out great. While Roseanne actually has a sad life where her children no longer live with her at home and her husband has died. And She's like really fucking depressed about That's this. Going so she rewrote it. On she rewrote it so that Jackie needs her help all the time and is a lost soul. That's a great point. Maybe that. I, sorry. Maybe that was a little. Uh, I mean, anything. It's fair game maybe, right now. We yeah, got, it's fair game. There's okay. there are nine seasons of analysis that we're about to embark on. So that's a great starting. <laughs> maybe that was a, a little un- unrealistic. I'm not sure. <laughs> We'll we'll see, but that's a no. That, there's a definite there's possibility. There's a theory there. There's yep. a theory there. Because yeah, Jackie Jackie is always like asking Roseanne and Dan for help with stuff. She does her laundry at their place. Yeah. What if in the real dimension, Jackie has owns a laundromat? <laughs> 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 it's a really successful laundromat. This and... is how Roseanne got back at her. And that's where she meets her girlfriends. <laughs> yeah, the laundromat. Yeah, the gay laundromat. <laughs> the gay laundromat. It's the only one in Lanford. <laughs> it's right across from the Lobo Lounge. <laughs> At uh, some point, what we should do is draw a map of Lanford, Illinois. Oh, that's a great idea. It, Hell yeah. It won't look like the scenes you see outside of the house. It won't look it, like anything. No, I think... It's Roseanne's house, Lobo <laughs> Lounge, Wellman Plastics, the school. <laughs> Okay, so now Roseanne has left work and is uh, rushing to her parent-teacher conference. Uh, we cut to the third scene, which is Miss Crane, the pain, doing some quad stretches <laughs> at her desk. I have a lot of... Uh, hopefully, Judy Prescott is going to respond to my interview <laughs> and Prescott. have a lot of questions. We need them. <laughs> Judy Prescott, we need your we need your answers. I want to I want to know about her experience as part of the Roseanne universe. I want to know all about it. I want to know 
about that choker thing she wears on her neck. I, right. I'm really curious about it's, the, it's one of the only one of these I've ever seen. It's yeah, it's like a flower bow it's like a flower bolo bow tie thing. Oh, cool. It's great. It's red. It, it looks ridiculous. It's awesome. It's something that should come back, but I've never once seen it. Any other I've time. not I'm seen not a, it's it before. It's a choker. It's a bit. Yeah. It's like a bolo tie. But yeah. it's a choker. Well, more, less like a bolo, more like a bow. It, I didn't even notice it. Up against it. the neck, real tight. It's yeah. It's oh, that's the first thing I noticed <laughs> as soon as I saw. And her perm. Her, her perm is oh, wonderful. She has a fantastic yeah. perm. It's epic perm. Excellent. That's a great perm. <laughs> I asked her. She still had that perm. Immediately signifies she's going to be evil because Ro- Roseanne and the ladies at the factory they don't have perms. They don't have no. perms. They don't. Play, oh yeah. They don't she's... play squash. Mm-hmm. Or was and... it racquetball? It's Rack- racquetball. It might have been squash. It was a racquetball? squash appointment. It's squash boy. appointment. <laughs> <laughs> right. And she was like stretching over her desk. Mm-hmm. So I would. I would. Interp- Roseanne doesn't stretch. <laughs> no, Roseanne no, does not no. stretch since the seventies. Yeah. Um, so Roseanne stum- uh, stumbles in 15 minutes late. Um, she got caught in traffic coming back from Wellman Plastics and couldn't get there in time for the meeting. Uh, so Miss Crane tries to suggest that they may be reschedule the meeting, but Roseanne sees the squash racket in her bag and it's just like, no. She just laughs no, her off. No, fuck you. I'm You're not just... going to reschedule this. This was awful to <laughs> you get. You know why? Here. It's because you play squash and I hate you. You're not, I, you're I not hate my hate people. You. Exactly. How could somebody like you teach my barking daughter? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Sorry. That, wait. <laughs> I, spoiled, I spoiled the barking part. Right. So this That's is, all right. This is, uh, this is kind of the whole purpose of the, the conference is... Darlene, Roseanne's daughter, has been barking in class, and Miss Crane has viewed this as a sign that there's a problem at home. Yeah, and she has. She, she seems pretty reasonable about it, and Roseanne's like super defensive about it the whole time. Except it seems that the intent is for us to think that the teacher is an intellectual fool who mm-hmm. won't mind her own business, no, and she's... Roseanne is like rightly putting her in her place. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I, I feel like that view of it, that's the sub-dimension. Mm-hmm. And the view of it that the teacher is being perf- perfectly reasonable and mm-hmm. Roseanne is being obstinate, that is the reality. And the, yeah. The, yeah, I agree. So, right. Uh, Miss Crane accuses Roseanne of potentially not spending enough time with Darlene. Which is a legit thing because, like, her husband apparently isn't doing jack shit in that regard and roseanne yeah. doesn't spend enough time with darlene she freely admits that that she tries to stay away from her kids because, like, <laughs> as we've already seen because yeah, she right. wants to kill them these kids that yeah they've ruined her life she wants and... them to kill themselves or mm-hmm. just die she tells them to go die <laughs> exactly she, over does. Over <laughs> she really does so so we end the scene with uh miss crane restating that it's a problem that Darlene barks in the class. And it's a legitimate problem. It is. She's disrupting the class. She's just, she's acting out. If you're a teacher and you've got a little kid that's doing that, you you tell the parents. You they, need to tell the parents. Yeah, that's not like something you just let go. Of. No, but, but what does Roseanne say? Roseanne says, we all bark in our family. <laughs> because... <laughs> and then, and then Miss Crane called CPS. Yeah. <laughs> in the sub-dimension universe. In the real dimension. The real dimension. In the reality, Wait, yes, is the that... sub-dimension the one Roseanne writes? Or yes. is that... Okay, yeah. In the real, real dimension, she called CPS. Right, but in the reality. sub-dimension, she just went, Oh, you! Urgh, I'm going to my squash! <laughs> and then... She probably did not play squash in the real life. She probably just played, like, Scrabble. Right. Scrabble. She had to she go to a Scrabble play anything. meeting. Yeah. She didn't play anything. She just wanted to go home because she was tired and Roseanne yeah. was like 15 minutes late. So cut to back at the Connor household. Uh, Darlene is kicking back at the kitchen table. She's got her soda. She's got a giant pile of snack food in front of her that is enough for the entire family. Yeah. Darlene's going to eat it. She ate an apple and threw it across the table and now it's rotting. Uh as Aww. though it had been eaten about like three takes prior to the one <laughs> that they oh, took. Absolutely been eaten three <laughs> takes. They probably ate that in the first scene and then just left it there. Just one of the stagehands. Yeah. You know, they ate it and whoops. <laughs> it was from the craft services too. Yeah, right. Um so now they've they've chosen this moment to discuss the uh the parent teacher conference. Um 
And this is where Darlene starts talking about Miss Crane, the pain, and how she's so boring and that she can't focus on the class unless she barks. She has ADD. Right. And she's dodging the issue. She's just yeah. a little kid trying not to get in trouble. She, whatever. So, yeah. And then Becky comes in and is, uh, she. A pain in the butt. Pain like in the always. butt. Oh, we. We forgot to we forgot to go deep into the Becky subplot where Becky's backpack is a piece of shit and is broken and right. oh yeah because that happened earlier her backpack broke she's like ma'am mm-hmm. give me a new oh. one and she asked Dan to go do it but Dan of course would not go do go, also go all that shit yeah. that happened at breakfast comes to a head now exactly yeah that yeah that's all right talk about it now okay yeah so so Dan was initially supposed to. He was asked by Roseanne to go uh, go to the teacher conference, but Dan had to put in a bid on a job, and he and Freddie were going to start construction if the bid came through, so he was occupied for that day. And no one ever meets Freddie. But anyway, we see that Dan has weaseled out of doing any work whatsoever. Uh, he, he just got he got drunk. Right. Right. Wait, Derek. Yeah, well, he, we're going to find out in a couple <laughs> minutes that he just got drunk and worked on a truck. But uh, So anyway, Roseanne has also been tasked with getting this new backpack, I believe, for Becky, because Becky's backpack fell apart. Right. Presumably because she tried to fill it with cans of food, and it just... <laughs> and it, it was about right. It was a $3 backpack from Kmart and immediately tore. $3 Kmart backpacks don't hold much. <laughs> no. So Becky's complaining now that she got the wrong color, Becky and Darlene start screaming at each other, and Roseanne makes a joke about how this is why uh, some animals eat their young. This is why animals eat their young. <laughs> That's how she says it. That's exactly how she says it. I was very it. good. I thought I was in the show for a minute. <laughs> so, uh, so Dan stumbles in, having, uh, having, as we said, been drinking all afternoon. <laughs> uh, he's clearly in a jovial mood. And what does he have with him, Scott? What does he have? Oh, he's got he's got a, a great figurehead. He's got a surprise. I don't know what... if I'd call that a great figurehead. Well, that's what he calls it. But it's it's wrapped in a towel. We don't know yet. We don't he... know yet. It's something. He goes. He, so he he comes in and he 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 just shoves it down on the table or something, and then he uh he he rushes right to the fridge to try and find the beer. Um. Yeah, he's, that's the first thing he goes to when he comes in. He's right. like, he's got to keep this buzz on. He's acting weird. He's acting weird. He, yeah, I think he <laughs> is buzzed. He, uh, of course, he's buzzed. Right? <laughs> At so least he teases it's uh, after ten a.m. <laughs> but if he <laughs> only had six, he's probably not buzzed yet. Well, he's not buzzed enough. He's not, not buzzed, buzzed enough. enough. He's got his morning buzz on. He's got to get his. <laughs> he's got his evening buzz to get on now. So he's reaching for the six pack, and that's uh, actually why the Connor family is so poor. They have to support Dan's drinking habits. That right. could be, yeah. <laughs> you get three cases of beer a week, it, it adds up yeah. <laughs> you know, on a on a manufacturing salary. And I don't know how how frequently would you guess that Dan has uh, contracting jobs? Once a month. Once a month sounds yeah. about right. During the like nice weather. I think it probably slows down during the winter. Yeah. Or he yeah. says Maybe that. once every two months. <laughs> he says, winter. oh, it's slow during the winter. I don't even put bids out because there's no jobs. <laughs> <laughs> I don't put them out between, uh, I you know. I just drink and look for figureheads. October to April, that time's no good. <laughs> <laughs> you can't do it then. Also, then he and Roseanne get into this screaming fight about how Dan doesn't do anything around the house. Oh, yeah. Well, this is, yeah. He so... doesn't have, he did doesn't get the jobs. Right. So what's revealed is that Dan put in Dan and Freddie put in a, a shitty bid. It was way too high. Someone else got the job. So to make up for the lost day, Dan went and helped his friend fix his truck. Right. Or getting uh, drunk. Right. Yeah. Yeah. He doesn't say this, but it's pretty obvious that this has happened. Roseanne calls <laughs> him out on it immediately as she puts together that he could have gone to the teacher conference. And he could have uh, bought the backpack. He could have done anything he other than what he sink. did. Anything productive. anything productive. But he didn't. And this angers Dan. Then he tries um, to cook a big can of corn for dinner. Well, yeah, but but first... And you can't have canned corn for no. dinner. You can't have canned corn for it's dinner. It's the hugest can I ever saw. It's massive. It's, yeah, it's like a... It's he not... slams the chair against the table, and then he grabs the canned corn. Mm-hmm. Yeah, now the slamming of the chair against the table... 
freaked me out. It's sort of that slamming of the chair against the table is like your first hint that there's something more than meets the eye here. Right. She has rewritten Dan to be a teddy bear, yet he's a teddy bear who still seethes with, with claws. violent rage. He's a teddy bear with claws. <laughs> he is a, definitely a teddy bear with claws. <laughs> and fear breath. Yeah, yeah. So, Roseanne... Oh, wait, they were all fighting and stuff, right? Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, I mean, he showed off his figurehead that he picked up. And, and that's it was really it all... ugly. Yeah, he's got this ridiculous Viking that he's going to put on his nar- his abs- absurd fantasy boat that he's building in his garage. <laughs> um, it really is an absurd fantasy. That's a great, that'll, that'll close out the episode where we, we learn about the boat. But uh, Roseanne and Dan start screaming at each other. And this is a hallmark of the show, I feel. Yeah, <laughs> serious drama. We serious. enter. We enter into a, a a portion of the show where the laugh, laughter cuts out for an extended period because everyone is uncomfortable. Uh, everyone's yelling at each other. Right, and, right, right. And then Becky, not Becky, Darlene. Darlene. Well, Becky screams. Right. Yeah. Darlene cuts her finger. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And cuts the tension. And cuts the tension. <laughs> cuts the tension with and her we finger. And we run into probably the only or the first mention of a demolition derby in a daytime TV series. I guess so. Yeah. I yeah. think one of the things that, uh, okay, so Darlene has cut her finger and the parents immediately break out of their fight and snap into action to help their daughter in the meantime, they man Roseanne manages to slam an insult towards Becky, telling her to shut up. Uh, even during a time of crisis, where yeah. Becky is suggesting maybe they get medical help, right. Roseanne I, just straight up tells her to shut up. I wish she had said, "Shut up, stupid." <laughs> yeah, that <would> she basically <laughs> that, did. See, that was the reality. It's funny just, because the laugh track cut up. in when she told Becky to shut up. <laughs> like that was. It is funny. Some... It's what? funny when you tell your kids to shut up. Oh my god! <laughs> no, it's hilarious. They're not people. But... <laughs> so the parents are freaking out, or not freaking out, but they're calmly wrapping their daughter's minor finger cut in a bandage, and Darlene just keeps uh, freaking out over how much it hurts, and they try to uh, as- like soothe her by uh, soothe the pain by right. taking your thought off of it. Right. First, they try a flower that doesn't work, and then they do the hilarious demolition derby gag where they try to get her to visualize to see and see it and be it yeah uh, to visualize <laughs> so so one thing that fascinates me about the description that they give darlene of the demolition derby uh so they're they're trying to get darlene to have this vivid memory so she takes her mind off of the pain in her finger and they they go through a lot of details about what happened at this demolition derby they do. and i don't think I, i've i think i've seen one demolition derby ever I don't remember a single specific about it. I know some cars like hurt each other, or well, you, know, you have to be geared to watch the demolition derby. Well, you don't have to, be, but I guess they did. I <laughs> they mean, did. They, they they were. were paying close attention were. to the activities that was going exciting. on. <laughs> I guess, yeah. I mean, just, if you're from Lanford, that's a big deal. Yeah, that's that must be the case. I hope so. So this strategy works. Darlene forgets about the pain uh, long enough for them to wrap a Band-Aid around her cut. And then she she runs off into the other room and is like, thank you. And she carries her bloody rag away. Oh, and God. That blood rag is bloody. Rag. That rag is just soaked in blood. <laughs> it's disgusting. It Every is. time I see that scene, I'm just like, oh. And apparently they've managed to get... Darlene to permanently forget about her pain because the, the cut doesn't stop hurting once you put a band-aid on it. <laughs> no, but, it doesn't. But um, so they they managed to fix her some other way. Maybe. They taught like they taught her club. they taught well, her to disassociate herself from reality. They that's probably, where that happened. They probably gave her some whiskey because that's they, oh that, god yeah they were or from some that cooking generation. Sherry. Yeah, some yeah, beer, yeah. Like, Roseanne's like here, beer. have some cooking sherry. Have some of have Shut some up. of my beer. Shut up Stop crying. You. Here's a goddamn band aid. Get out. If you don't <laughs> stop crying, rag and get out. I'll give you something to cry about. <laughs> so what we get to see is that this uh, small tragedy reunites Dan and Roseanne in love. It does somehow. Uh, bliss. bliss. Then they go out to the boat. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. <laughs> if you want to call that a boat. Well, they they join hands and they each start doing their and respective tasks. And they start tasks. making out. Well, yeah. No, they don't make out. 
No, but okay. So before the boat, though, there, yeah, they, uh, Dan goes and he starts fixing up the sink like he was supposed to, and Rosanna's cooking, and then there's, it's back to life as normal. Yeah, nobody's gonna eat a gigantic can of corn. It's good. Dan has managed to completely avoid the subject of being a, a layabout and not contributing to housework, and he's oh, wow. fine with that. So it he's just like, I'll LA. fix the sink. We got out of a, a really scary conversation. Now let's talk about the boat. Okay, so yeah, now we cut to the boat scene, the uh, the credit scene, where we get to see Dan standing on his wonderful fantasy boat that he is building. It's a rib thing. It's an upside <laughs> it's down a rib. It's an upside down. It's the hull. It's yeah. the hull it's of the boat. It's a hull. Well, it's almost the frame. a hull. It's the skeleton of a hull. And he's sanding yeah. it and going to feel how smooth these ribs are, Roseanne. <laughs> mm, yeah. That is not a seaworthy craft, nor <laughs> will it ever be. And Dan is describing a future where he and Roseanne have retired and are sailing around on the Caribbean. In not the, on every, that thing. On this boat that he's putting together in his garage. With which an is, ugly wooden head. <laughs> every night will be a journey to ecstasy, he tells Roseanne. Yep. No, that's true. That <laughs> is what Maybe that's just on a this, sex thing. On this wooden craft with the ugly wooden head. <laughs> but he does know what... Pushes Roseanne's buttons because it, yeah, this he is, pushed her button all right. Roseanne just says straight up, "This is turning me on. Let's do it." Dan, it's awesome. Dan responds, "What about the sink?" And Roseanne responds, "Anywhere you want it." It was like the funniest joke of that show. It was, that except was like I don't really understand it. Show. It's like I, I guess know. they, I guess they're the gonna go like joke. have sex on the sink. I guess the is... idea is that Roseanne. Yeah, put I would up... break the sink <laughs> yeah, again. Absolutely destroy the sink, Roseanne... which Dan has not fixed. He I hasn't guess. fixed it, but it will break it further. <laughs> you, you pretended to fix it for okay. five minutes at yeah, the end of last scene. Just a little. Roseanne puts up with whatever crazy quasi abuse that Dan can dish out. Because he's got a very large boat. I think that's uh, the, the lesson that mm-hmm. we have to learn. And it's not a good lesson. No. It's it not honestly a good is lesson not a good all. lesson. <laughs> <laughs> it's teaching any little kid that watched Roseanne back in the day learned something bad from this show, I think. Yeah. I think it's not a show for children. <laughs> it's not a show for adults either. Because, yeah, we, well, yeah, we didn't really learn anything. We didn't. I learned some things. What did you learn? I learned that you. Don't throw shoes at children because they can have a hard time catching them. Mm. That... I learned how not to traumatize your children. How not to traumatize your children. I learned that the male ego tastes like a delicious donut. I learned that, oh, you know what I, what I did learn is that uh, beer commercials make up roughly 50% of a man's personality. Yeah, that's true. It also tastes like true. a donut. All right, so that concludes episode one, Life and Stuff, of Roseanne. It's been fun. It's been fun. Uh, please please view our Facebook page. And like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter and, and tell, all of those things. Tell all your friends, everything. Wait, what's our, twi- what's our Facebook account and our Twitter account? Our Facebook is Roseanne Retrospectives, and our Twitter is Rosie Retros. Oh, Rosie Retros? Yeah. Rosie Retros, cool. Rosie Retros. Great. So please follow us. And uh, thank you very much. Have a wonderful day.